This is a cat snake, so they're from the Boega family. And what's really cool about them is they're rear fanged. They bite you. They won't kill you unless you're allergic to the venom, but they bite you, they'll make nauseous, swell up, vomit, headaches, a real fun time. So you don't want to get bit by them. He's got some stuck shed right on his head and his neck. And he's also got it on his lower back. So shedding will be a lot easier after we give him a good soak. I love this snake so much. I wouldn't want to irritate him too much or stress him out anyway. But I just want to help him get that skin off. So it's nice and comfy and it's not irritating, dropping off in chunks. Look at that big, massive drop of skin kind of. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm here at the Everglades Outpost in Homestead, Florida, in my snake house, hanging out with little Ziggy, my American crocodile. And as you can see, he's growing like a weed. Look how big he is. He's just over two feet long. Crocodile is the cutest because they're so damn cute. Look at that face. Oh, he doesn't like the camera. He doesn't like that big fish eye lens. It's okay, Ziggy. I love you, Ziggy. I love this crocodile so much. Just to make it very clear, he is not a pet. He's an educational ambassador for a species, the American crocodile, which used to be endangered here in Florida. But they still need protection throughout the range. So he's great to have, used for education, and let everyone know how cool crocodiles are. He's such a little beast. And speaking of little beasts, Look how big these lace monitors have gotten. They're over two feet long now. I've only had them for a couple months. They're growing like crazy. They're gonna need an upgrade soon, a giant vision cage with lots of space. We're gonna use the biggest vision cage they make. The mangrove snake over here has been doing really good. Actually, let me uh, let me put little Ziggy down for a second so I can show you this mangrove snake. All right, so this mangrove snake, remember this is an animal that was surrendered to the Everglades outpost. This is a sanctuary, so they've taken a lot of animals. And here in the state of Florida, you must have a venomous snake license to own a rear fanged snake. This is a cat snake, so they're from the Boega family. And what's really cool about them is they're rear fanged. They bite you. They won't kill you unless you're allergic to the venom. But if they bite you, they'll make nauseous, swell up, vomit, headaches, a real fun time. So you don't want to get bit by them. And this one is a wild caught for sure. We've been feeding him. I've been giving him treatment too to take care of worms. But he's been eating. All I've got to do is put the rat right up to his mouth. And then once he tastes that rat, he starts to eat it. And what's really cool is this snake, whoop, this snake is only about three and a half feet long, maybe four feet long. This snake can actually get upwards to seven, eight feet long, beautiful black and yellow species. And if you guys remember, I found this species out in the wild in Thailand. So I've been able to see how these guys live so I can replicate best as possible how to set them up in captivity so they're nice and happy. So we're gonna put them right back inside his exhibit. Wanna go swim? He's gonna go back to his thing. He's gonna go back to sleep. <laughs> he's like, why'd you wake me up? But he's fine. He's doing good. He's been eating meals every week. He's been putting on weight. I'm super stoked about this snake. Let's see what else is going on. If you look over here, you're gonna know something really different. Remember, I put a bunch of fish in here. It was awesome, colorful, beautiful fish. I love them, but they started doing something that I didn't like. I came home from being gone for like a day, and uh, the prior day before I left, I guess I didn't notice this. These fish were picking at a shell, picking at Finn the Fly River Trail shell. My poor little, my big nose baby. Check this out. Jeff, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeff. But don't be angry. What's going on, beautiful people? I know it looks like ma'am right now. I'm here with my good friend Peter and his beautiful wife Kim. And we noticed that my Fly River Turtle has these disgusting scars on his back where basically he's been picked at over the weekend by these African cichlids, by these fish. I got these fish for the tank, they look beautiful. I thought they would have been a hearty fish that'll be good with this animal. But it turns out when he tries to sleep at night, they pick at his skin. Like they picked at his skin underneath his armpit. They picked on his shell. You know, this is like a soft shelled turtle, so it's very sensitive. And I can't have fish in here that are gonna tear apart his shell. He's gonna be part of a future breeding project. He's a very important species, the fly river turtle, so you don't want that happening. So we're taking out all the fish and we're relocating them. So all the crocodilian tubs. So Ziggy, <laughs> Ziggy's got a whole bunch of fish in here because Ziggy doesn't mind dealing with some mean fish because if you know if they give him some attitude, he's gonna deal with them. Isn't that right, Ziggy? Isn't that right? <laughs> Ziggy gets some new fish in his terrarium. Some new fish for the mangrove snake. Everybody gets a fish today. Smooth front, Bruce the Broad Snout came and everyone's getting an African cichlid for their set. So uh, sadly, the African cichlids need to go because these fly river turtles mean a lot to me and they're going to be a part of very important breeding projects for their species. So we don't want them getting injured. And he needs to be nice and beautiful and look for little Fanita right over here. Fanita's doing good. Look how beautiful and clean her shell is. That's how Finn's shell should look, but you can see he's been torn apart by these fish. 
he'll heal up no problem in the next month or two, but we just gotta get these fish out. So I'm sorry, Jeff. Jeff is, I, he can't deal with this. Look, he's getting a breath of air. <laughs> Let's see how Jeff is doing. Let me, let me see if I can get a hold of Jeff. Get my bench on. Jeff. Jeff. Come here, Jeff. Oh, it's slimy, Jeff. Come here, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's doing good. Jeff doing his Jeff stuff, you know, hanging out under a log, coming up once every hour and a half for air. He lives a very important life. He does very important things. Check Peter out. I could have got these fish out of the tank without him. He's a, he's a master wrangler, even though he's dropping these after the second time down. You can throw that one right over to Ziggy over there. All right, come on, Ziggy. Ziggy. Oh, you, Good oh, boy, oh. Ziggy. Solid. <laughs> you guys are probably wondering, how is he able to feed that crocodilian with ease? Well, Peter, also known as Peter, chicken noodles and gambles. <laughs> <laughs> Worked at Gatorland basically most of his, what, your average 20s? Uh, yeah, probably like five years. Yeah, he's worked at Gatorland and, uh, forever. Now he works out Wild Florida, works with crocodilians. That's he's right. also got a YouTube channel coming out, so check him out. Link below. Thanks again for helping me Thanks, fish. Man. Appreciate it. All right, so... There you go, that's what happens to the African cichlids. I know it seems a little harsh, but I had to avenge my son, you understand. Oh, you don't? How about now? How about now? If your son was getting his butt picked off by a bunch of fish, you murder all those fish too. I didn't murder the fish, my son murdered the fish. See, I mean, not mur- Don't tell anyone about this. All right, quit messing around. Come on, come on, we got stuff to do today. So, oh, Carl the corals. It's hard not to explain what's going on with everyone as I walk by. But Carl the coral snake's doing good. It looks like he may have eaten earlier this week. Hopefully he starts eating more. And uh, I might actually offer him some water snakes because these snakes hunt other snakes in the wild. Like most coral snakes, they are a snake hunter. They even hunt other coral snakes out in the wild. So that's pretty cool. Carl the aquatic coral snake. The green anacondas are growing like crazy. They're both going to shed. One already busted out of the shed. The other one's going to shed now. And they both are eating every five days. Shits. Eating like crazy. <laughs> Grabbing them, wrapping around them, and eating them. They're doing really good. So today, for today's video, we're going to be taking care of Kevin. He shed. Yes, he shed again. We got a beautiful shed. We're going to have a little shed party. Yeah. Maybe not today. We celebrated last time because it took so long for him to go through the shedding process and also we were healing his chin so when he finally shed and that beautiful clean chin we were happy to through a celebration but uh, today is just a typical maintenance day we're going to take him out we're going to give him a bath and by bath we're going to be soaking him in this lukewarm water there's about a foot in here or so so he can get under the water and soak his back because this was not a full shed it broke up in pieces so on his back he does have chunks of shed we're going to have to help throw off with the water and as you know, after a good soaking, it's pretty easy. He's also gone to the bathroom as well, so we're gonna take care of that, make this enclosure nice and clean, and bring this king cobra to the spa. All right, guys, so we're gonna be taking out Kevin, the king cobra. Let's see how he's doing today. I haven't handled him in probably a week. I'm sorry, I just need a scoop under him, pull his coil out. I know he's getting hungry because he's growing like crazy. Look at him, he's a beast of the king cobra. Every time a snake sheds, that just means they're growing like crazy. So this snake is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And woo, he's a little upset today. I can actually hear him growling. Look, him. you can actually see he's got some stuck head caps right there. Come here. He's got some stuck shed right on his head and his neck. And he's also got it on his lower back. So shedding will be a lot easier after we give him a good soak. So let's get Big Boy into the can. Come on. A lot of you guys watching this might go, this guy's insane, he's reckless, yada, yada, yada. But you gotta realize I've been doing this for a very long time. And I very well understand the body language of these animals, allowing me to get away with such crazy handling techniques. But that's quite all right. It's what I do, and I'll do it forever. Perfect. No, stop it. He's trying to bust out. <laughs> we'll be right back. Let me get a paint can. And a nice big can of paint to keep him nice and secure in this snake holding receptacle that looks a lot like a trash can. All right, so we got to clean up this enclosure, let him soak for about an hour, let him really absorb that water, get it through his skin, get it under the old skin, help it throw off, and also help him hydrate. So 
as you can see, if you go into here, there's shed everywhere, just broke up in big pieces. But look at that, it always gives you the opportunity to see how massive this snake is. This is just the tail end, and it's got huge belly scales. Look at this, giant scales. It's so crazy, because there's an individual scale is the size of a nail, look at that. They're huge, such a huge snake. World's longest venomous reptile, and probably the world's largest venomous reptile, not considering the Komodo dragon. Some people out there are probably going to freak out. Okay, the world's longest, largest venomous snake. There we go. That's what we're doing. So hopefully in the future, I'm really hoping, it's real difficult to get these guys to go through a full shed when they're so big, but hopefully in the future, when we set up a big walk-in enclosure for these king cobras and they all have their own little habitats, we're going to try and do little concrete streams that go through the habitat to simulate what they have in the wild. Because out in the wild, they go through streams, they're constantly swimming to go through other parts of the forest. It's something they constantly are coming in contact with. So adding a stream will simulate what they have in the wild, letting them absorb water more often, helping get poop off their stomach, helping them shed. I think it's going to be a good idea. So hopefully in the future, we can, guide, we can try to get these king cobras to do full sheds instead. You can see Justina's hanging out. She's right here. She's hungry too. She needs to eat some food pretty soon. I've got plenty of frozen thawed pythons because now that it's summer, all the python hunters are hitting me up going, I got pythons, I got pythons. Does your king cobra need to eat? Now I need to buy another drop freezer because so many people want to give me pythons. All right, so from his last meal, you can see what's left over, just the scales from the python. That's how we know that's the last bit he was digesting. So he's got a completely empty stomach, so we can offer him food soon. Justina stopped. Did you hear that? She's trying to strike at me while I'm cleaning. She's such a sweetie. All right, we took care of all the waste in there. I'm gonna put this back to the side, and what we're gonna do is change up the water, give it a good rinse, because he pooped a little bit on the lip of the ball, and I gotta tell you, as somebody who pooped a little bit on the edge of my water glass, I don't think I want to drink out of that water glass, you know what I'm saying? Not, not that that would, not that that would go to a place where they poop on my water glass, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Ooh, fresh, 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 H2O. Only the finest water for my babies. Not yet, come with me! Alright, we're just gonna clean out the track real good so I can slide the glass pretty easy. Looking pretty good. Move the mulch around. Perfect. The king can go back inside his apartment complex. I'm gonna put the glass back and then we're gonna let him sit for another 30, 45 minutes. I want him to soak really good. I haven't soaked him in about a week or two, so I really want him to get a lot of water and hydrate because it's gonna be good for the future. Ooh, the glass looks a little dirty. I'm gonna clean the glass and then soon we're gonna get to letting the king go back in his kingdom. Meantime, we're waiting for Kevin to soak. He's right in here. There's a nice big tea waiting for him because we know he likes Starbucks sweet tea. And uh, we have the Egyptian cobra right here. It's shed. It's growing like crazy. This is cool because the snake will get massive. Its parents were near 10 feet long. Big, beautiful Egyptian cobras. Gnarly snakes. If you remember Steve Irwin's most dangerous encounters, you remember this big African cobra chasing around? It was an Egyptian cobra. Same species, just like this, same locality. Look at him biting his shed as it comes out. He's a crazy, look at him, he's a crazy aggressive snake, or a crazy defensive snake. He just wants to be left alone. And soon, very soon, I just got a bunch of new cages. We're gonna upgrade his cage, we're gonna upgrade the Monocle Cobra cage. Everyone's gonna get an upgrade. Look at this, he's gonna come out a little bit. What's up, dude? What's up, dude? He's a crazy snake. Look at this. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna leave King Tut alone. Yeah, I named him King Tut. We're trying to figure out whether or not it would be Pharaoh or King Tut. I decided King Tut because I feel like it's very fitting. Don't smash your face, dude. Stop it. No. All right, we're going to walk away now. And I said Crocodilus Nautilacticus. More like Crocodilus not going to ride with us. Am I right? Oh yeah, you're dead. All right, guys. So let's put the King Cobra back inside his enclosure. The mighty Kevin should be done soaking. There we go. Look at him. He's right here. Go real slow. He's right here. You can see his head still got that stuck shit on it. I 
Let's see what we can do. Let's see, uh, see if we can work with him a little bit and maybe get this off. Going super slow. Kind of pull. Oh, perfect. Pull the head cap on. There we go. Look how beautiful. Look at that skin. Look how beautiful he is. Such a good looking animal. Oh, look at that hood. Oh, he didn't like that. All right, let's put him back in the water a little bit. Let him soak more. Get under that skin. We're just soaking him a little more, helping him out. He's got his skin on his face. All right, so we're gonna do this real slow because I'm not, it actually looks like he still has a lot of skin to shed off. And if it's still pretty hard to take off, I'm not gonna rip it, I don't wanna hurt him. As you can see, I'm slowly peeling it off. There we go, look at that. Okay, so this stuff is just slowly coming off. I'm going super calm, that's the only reason I'm not getting bit right now. I'm making sure the animal's comfortable, he's not irritated. The second he gets too irritated, I'm going to stop because I know he's not enjoying it. But as you can see, he's letting me just throw off all that skin. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful snake. He's such a gorgeous individual. Alright, really slow. We're going to take it off of this chunk. Danger, real danger. Obviously, this is a big risk that I'm taking right now, but I'm focusing on my ability to handle animals, to read the body language, and keep myself out of real danger. I'm gonna leave the rest of the skin by his lower jaw alone because he's not enjoying it, but I'm gonna help throw off, off the rest of that skin. As you can see, it's coming off a bit. So we're gonna go nice and slow and gently take the sock of the skin off like this. For my belief, you can see all the belly scales coming off. Ooh, look how beautiful he is. Slide it off, look at that, coming off like a sock. Oh, this is so cool. All right, actually, let's get him on the ground and get him to coil, or get him to actually slide forward and I can pull, oh, look at this. It's coming off perfectly. It's slowly coming off like a sock. That's awesome, look at this. So it's, it's throwing off no problem. Try to get it all off in one big chunk so he's not a bunch of flaking pieces. And I'm keeping one eye on him the whole time as I do it. Because he can turn around any second and let me know he's not enjoying this. But so far, so good. This is really good, look at that. Beautiful Malaysian King Cobra, super gold. Brand new set of scales right underneath. And like I said before, this means he's growing. This means he's getting big. This is really good news. Stop it, Kevin. So, that was him letting me know. I moved a little too much for his liking. Oh, not my boots. All right. Slowly dropping off that skin. I love this snake so much. I wouldn't want to irritate him too much or stress him out anyway. But I just want to help him get that skin off so it's nice and comfy and it's not irritating for off him off in chunks. Look at that big, massive drop of skin. I didn't realize that he was still, uh, still had a lot of shed to go. I thought he got most of it off, but no, he's got a beautiful set of scales ran into that old skin. Don't eat the black-headed pipe. Leave the black-headed pipe on him. No, leave Black Sabbath alone. He doesn't want to get eaten by you. He's got better things to do. Look at this. This is insane. Look at the skin. He's such a beautiful skin. I believe that was just the, that was the portion that took him off. The rest of him is all good to go. Look how beautiful he is. This is insane. Look at him. Big, 15 foot long. Malaysian King Cobra, gorgeous animal, big, beautiful boy, big belly. Look at him. I love this snake so much. He's just chilling. He's not trying to kill me or anything. He's just trying to go off and do his own thing. Let's see. I'm going to look at his face real quick. Let's see how that face looks. 
Alright. Hmm. Alright. Big, beautiful kid. Look at him. The king. Such a beautiful snake. We're gonna let him go right back into his enclosure. And he has just a little bit of stuck shed on his jaw. Hopefully that comes off in the next couple days. If not, I'll just soak him again and it should throw off, off no problem. Sorry. How cool is that? Pulling the skin slowly off of a 15 foot Malaysian king cobra with the colors of the sun. Such a beautiful species. I love him so much. Now remember, that's not a tame snake. He's very much wild. And if he wanted to, he could lay fangs at me, inject me with venom. But as long as I treat him with respect, the energy I give out is what I get back. If I'm crazy, if I'm jumpy, if I'm shaking, I'm scared, I'm moving too much, it catches his attention. And then he picks up on that, pursues me, and tries to bite. Most of the time, it's a mock charge, but if they feel threatened, they will bite, and they won't envenomate you and kill you. So they're no joke. They deserve the utmost respect, but that's why I love them. All right, beautiful people. I think that's a wrap-up for this episode. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, but most of all, stay gangster.